In this video, we will understand about flow shop scheduling uh, for n jobs, n greater than one and three machines. How do we solve such a problem? Means basically we'll be understanding about how do we create the job sequence and then subsequently, how do we find the idle time for each of the machine? So here the question is, determine the optimal sequence of jobs that minimizes the total elapsed time based on the following information on processing time on machines is given in hours and passing is not allowed. Passing is not allowed means uh, first it has to, uh, the job has to get processed through M1, then M2, then M3. That is the sequence of machines. We also need to evaluate the idle time for each machine. Here the hours taken by each job in each machine is given. So how do we proceed? In order to apply Johnson's algorithm, which we had seen uh, in the previous video for two machines, we need to convert this uh, three machines to two machines by bringing in two fictitious machines. And that can be possible only if it satisfies the following conditions. Means minimum of T1J should be greater than or equal to maximum of Tij for all i ranging from two to k minus one, which means uh, if the first machine's processing time, let us compare all the first machine's processing time, what is the minimum? Here the minimum is three, okay? And then that should be larger than all in-between machine except for the last machine. In-between machine's processing time, that is one condition, or you take the last machine, whatever is the minimum, in this case, the minimum is five, that should be greater than or equal to uh, in between machines, whatever it is, the processing times, it should be greater. So that is what any one of these conditions should satisfy. Here K represents the number of machines. So for a three machine problem, it is like, I am going to check all the processing time of first machine, the least is three, okay? And then middle machine is only one. Here the maximum is five. So we need to check whether uh, minimum of all this is greater than or equal to uh, maximum of all these. Here maximum is, uh, minimum is three for the first machine, but here the maximum is five. So the first condition is not satisfying, but we can check the second condition, which is minimum of TKJ means third machine's processing time, whatever is the minimum, here it is five. Is it greater than or equal to middle machine's maximum processing time? Maximum processing time is five, so phi is equal to phi, that means the second condition is satisfying. That is what is written here. Uh, for three machine problem, it should satisfy minimum of T1J, either that should be greater than or equal to minimum of T2J or minimum of T3J, that should be greater than or equal to maximum of T2J. If any of the above two conditions is satisfied, then we can create two fictitious machines, say Roman letter one and Roman letter 12, sorry, two, where the durations of one and two will be calculated as duration of machine uh, Roman letter one is T1J plus T2J. Duration of machine two is T2J plus T3J. So here we may notice minimum of T1J is three, uh, minimum of T3J is five, maximum of T2J is five, which means that the second condition is satisfying because five is equal to five. So we can now uh, convert the machines. So let me, just remove this cross, whatever I did. Yeah. So now let us go back to the, go back to this machine. We are going to add three plus four. It is seven. It is written there. Uh, so eight plus three, 11, seven plus two, nine means seven, 11, nine, nine. Yeah. Seven, 11, nine, nine. Okay. And then uh, 10, 12, 10. 10, 12, 10. Now for the second uh, fictitious machine, it is 10, 10, 7. Here it is 10, 10, 7. Okay. And then 16, 6, 10, 15. 16, 6, 10, 15. 16, 6, 10, 15. So we created these two fictitious machines. Now we can proceed like how we did for our uh, two machine problem, same way. So here, uh, if the shortest time for first machine if the shortest time is identified for the first machine, then do that job first. If the shortest time is for the second machine, then do that job last. 
and if there is a tie in the processing time then we will choose that job for which the difference in the processing time is large between the machines and enter in the location depending on the machine based on this we will proceed as follows so let us see now the least among all these if you look into six is the least which is actually job e and uh, and it is occurring in machine two that means job e will be executed the last let me write e here now next list next list we may notice it is seven it is occurring here also it is occurring here also here if you consider this basically uh, it is job a and it is occurring in machine one here it is not occurring both i mean the least processing time is not in the same machine so we can do it separately machine one uh, a is coming so a will be executed first then i will cut that then here seven is coming that means it is job c machine two job c will be executed prior to job e then i will cut that now the next list is uh, nine nine occurs here and uh, the corresponding job is job d and it is occurring in machine one that means i will have to execute d after a okay then let me cut that then next list we may notice it is 10 and in machine one it is occurring only once it is occurring in g so g will be executed next means after d let me cut that now in machine two uh, least time is occurring that is 10 is occurring in here also here also now let us understand the difference between these two here it is one here it is two let me choose the largest difference that means f and it is occurring in machine two that means f will be done in the end that means before c so only one is left that is b let me write it there so let me cut that b over there f and b so this is our job sequence now let's write that sequence here a b g b f c and e now uh, for our convenience i am copying this particular data three machine uh, processing time data here once again so that it is easier for us to write down referring this right now uh, job uh, a in machine one it is taking three you know, three hours processing time so in time will be zero plus three out time will be three then let us start with three for d it is taking four hours so three plus four seven let me start with seven g is taking seven seven plus seven it is 14 start with 14 b is going to take eight hours so 14 plus 8 it is 22 start with 22 here it is 8 hours 22 plus 8 it is 30 start with 30 and then c is going to take 7 hours so 30 plus 7 it is 37 start with 37 e is going to take 9 hours so it is 46 37 plus 9 46 now in machine 2 only after completion of uh, job a in machine 1 it can be taken in machine 2 so it has to start at our uh, end of third hour okay now a in machine 2 is going to take 4 hours so 3 plus 4 7 again here also 7 here also 7 so we can proceed uh, d for job d in machine 2 it is taking 5 hours 7 plus 5 it is 12 and this machine 2 can be occupied only after completion of job g so it has to start at 14 hours g at machine 2 is taking 3 hours 14 plus 3 it is 17 so again it can start only at 22nd hours end so b is going to take 3 hours 22 plus 3 it is 25 here again it is 30 f uh, in machine 2 it is 4 hours so 34 here here it is 37 c uh, it is going to take 2 hours 37 plus 2 it is 39 and uh, here it is 46 e it is taking 1 hour so 46 plus 1 it becomes 47 here we can start machine 3 at the end of 7th hour only so a machine a it is going to take 6 hours 7 plus 6 13 so it starts at 13 d it is taking 11 hours 13 plus 11 it is 24 so it has to start at 24 here g it is 12 hours 
24 plus 12, it is 36. So here it is 36. B, 7 hours. That means 36 plus 7 is 43. Here it is starting at 43. F, 5 hours. 43 plus 5, it is 48. Here it is 48. C, uh, for machine 3 is 5 hours. 48 plus 5, it is 53. And then uh, here it will start at 53 hours. And uh, job E, it is taking 5 hours. 53 plus 5, it is 58. I think 7 plus uh, job A, it is 6. Okay, I am once again verifying. D, it is 24. Okay, 24 plus job G, it is 12. So 36. 36 uh, B, it is taking 7 hours. So 43. 43 I wrote here. 43 plus 6, I think. Oh, I made a mistake there. Yeah, so F, it is taking six hours. That means it is 49. So it starts at 49. And C, it is taking five hours. So it is 54. So 54 again. E, it is taking five hours. So it is ending at 59th hour. Now idle time, there is no idle time in the beginning for uh, machine one, dash, dash. Continuously it is going, starting at zero, going to three, seven, 14, 22, 30, 37. So here till now till here there is no idle time whereas in the end it is actually the ending of the processing happens at 59th hour whereas here in the machine one it is over by 46th hour that means 13 hours idle time is there so here let me write total here it is 13 for I, machine uh, idle time in machine two here three hours idle time beginning and then here no idle time here Two hours idle time is there. So let me write to two. Here, five hours idle time is there. Here, five hours again idle time. Here, three hours. Here it is uh, 39 and 46. That means seven hours plus here seven hours plus 59 minus 47. That means it is 12 hours. So if I add this, five plus five, 10, 15, uh, 18, 25, uh, 37. Total idle hours is 37. Machine 3, it initially there is an idle hour 7 hours, then nothing, 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 nothing. So I can put dash everywhere. Total is 7. We can also calculate idle hours like this. Let me add this uh, 11, 18, 22. Uh, 31, uh, 39, 46. Here, 7, 9, 14, 15, 19, 22. Here, 13, uh, 18, 29, 34, 40, 52. So, uh, the total elapsed time. We already noticed it is 59 hours. So idle time for machine one. Is this total elapsed time minus the total processing time you get 13. That is what we got here. Idle time for machine two is 59 total elapsed time minus 22. We get 37. That is what we got it here. Then similarly, idle time for machine 3 is total elapsed time minus 52 processing time. Total processing time that is 7 hours. That is what we got here. So that is how we apply Johnson's algorithm uh, in case of three machines.